This is Philly's Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance, along with Ricky Patalico. I'm Michael Barkham, Ben Davis in a few moments. 4-1 Phillies go down to the Los Angeles Dodgers. We wondered going in how it would go. And Ricky Bo, I would say uh, the question to be answered is how do we want the rest of this thing to go? Because they are three games back of a wild card spot, seven and a half back of the division. So forget about the division with the Mets washed out. They fall a half game further back, seven and a half back. But they're three back in a wild card. So we can do this slow torture the entire season with the scoreless there's innings a, and all the other stuff. There's a good chance it's going to be a slow torture. But let, let's talk a little bit Go about ahead. this this mess that went on tonight. The Phillies offense is anemic. I mean, these are guys – I mean, this was an offense that was bought. It was a bought offense. And I know Bryce Harper's not in the lineup, but I, I will give credit where credit is due. Kyle Schwarber had a nice night tonight. He hit a couple balls hard. Everybody else – yeah, JT had a hit there at the end of the ball game. But what, what is really going on with this team? I mean, they, they, you, you score one run tonight, none, then three, then none – Come on. Yeah. I mean, you're playing in your home ballpark. You would think that you're used to playing in your home ballpark, that the fans would at least give you some kind of an adrenaline rush and push you through some things, and you're playing four-hour games to, to, to score to, for five total runs. The fans. It's out you of can, control. You know, the Who was playing here tonight at Wells Fargo Center, and I hope that's not what they're saying about the Phillies roster at the end of the season. The Who? The Who? Take a look at this, Ricky Bo. This is where did the offense go? Where did all the offense go? It's not scoring four total runs in the last four games. Yep. 21 straight scoreless innings before scoring one run in the ninth. That Stop almost right didn't there. count. Stop right there. I'm that stopping. probably wouldn't have happened if Kimbrell came in to start that inning. You're right. So they, they actually got lucky that the, that the Dodgers scored in the top half of the night. Four runs in the last 42 innings dating back to Sunday. To Sunday, three runs or fewer last six home games. Averaging 3.8 runs in 22 home games and 5.4 runs in 17 road games. Did that make not, no sense. Did that not feel like they won the game because they scored a run? Yeah. How terrible is that? It was a huge accomplishment. That, that's, that's when you know your offense is going completely in the wrong direction. When they score one run, it's rejoice. Mm -hmm. at Citizens Bank Park. Forget that. Score some runs. Bunch them. Rejoice for a run scored. Not a win. Not a win, but a run scored. 194 pitches. Okay. Correct. 109 strikes only for the Phillies. Yeah. So, number and one, look number one, that's pathetic. Number two, seven walks is entirely walks. way too much. Yeah, and that's something that these guys can't do. If you're getting called out of the bullpen, Ricky, you have to throw strikes. And these guys, again, they walked the tightrope again tonight with the with the free passes and only gave up the four runs. I mean, seven walks to this lineup, you're just well, asking for it. I mean, the Dodgers were one for seven with runners in scoring position. Chris Taylor was awful. That's what I'm saying. Like, like you got to thank, you got to count your blessings that it was only four runs with those seven walks because this is a lineup. I, I, it's a very good lineup. And by, by when the season ends, you're going to see some big numbers out of a lot of these guys. I know Freeman's really hot right now and three more hits this evening, but this is an offense that can really get it going and get it going in a hurry. So you start walking all these guys and loading the bases that have no place to put them. You're just, you know, flirting with disaster. And they were able to, again, to kind of get away with it. But you can't walk guys. You yeah. can't walk, guys. Ben, I want your objective opinion about JT Real Muto tonight in particular, uh, as a former catcher, in particular in the first inning. Ricky and I and Sean Kane, our producer, were observing Ranger Suarez struggling and struggling, and she's thrown 23 pitches with the three or four batters, and he's walked a couple of guys. Shouldn't the catcher go out before the pitching coach comes out? Shouldn't the catcher go out there and try to calm a guy down? Yeah, you think so. Just have him take a breather. And again, it was it was a lot of heavy lifting early on. You warm up in the bullpen. You come in. You sit down. You throw eight pitches. Then you throw all these pitches in the game. At some point, you, he, he's gassed. He is spent out there. You have to give him a breather just to kind of regroup and take a couple deep breaths and just go out there and kind of clear your mind out there. A cleansing breath sometimes in sports is one of the best things you can do as an athlete. Um, yeah, I would think that that he would have gone out there maybe a little bit earlier. But Ranger is also a different kind of guy that. You don't have to stay on him all the time because he knows himself. He knows what he has to do out there. He doesn't try and trick anybody. He attacks hitters accordingly. Maybe that was in the back of JT's mind saying, like, I know at some point he's going to figure it out. Unfortunately, tonight he didn't figure it out. Ben, what are you seeing from Nick Castellanos right now? Obviously, he's in, he's in a pretty bad slump. But what are you seeing that he's doing differently or, or awkwardly? Or what, what are you seeing from him that is wrong? 
He is really aggressive right now, Ricky. I, he's seemingly swinging at everything. It uh, doesn't matter what pitch it is. He's first pitch hacking, and they're, they're kind of catching him off stride a little bit. He's getting some pitches to hit. He's just missing. That last one, that last when he struck out yeah, off that Bickford, hanger. that was a, a pitch that you usually see a, a guy like uh, Nick Castellanos deposit into the stands. You know something's off when he's not hitting that particular pitch because that was a good one to hit, and I'm sure he'll be the first one to tell you that. But it just seems like he's caught in between. He's late on the fastball, early on a breaking ball. So, uh, you know, he's – He's going to be fine. It's it's Nick Castellanos. I mean, he's going to be up there in the top hitters in the league. I firmly believe that. He's just going through one of those things, and it's not just him, obviously. It's the whole offense in, in general. But they need to clean this up and, and just really have some better at-bats. It's a lot of uberly, uber-aggressive guys in this lineup. Take what they're going to give you. If it's not your pitch, if it's strike one and it's not your pitch, who cares? You still get two more pitches. I know these guys are good. I get that, and I know they everyone throws hard, 95 to 100. But if everyone does it, maybe you get more acclimated to it. And, you know, I don't know you don't want to give the guy a cookie right in the beginning, but you still have two strikes to work with. Just because it's a strike doesn't mean it's your strike. I like the way you put that. Benny! All right, my friend. Thanks All so right, much. Guys. We end with a smile, right? Yeah. Shake it loose to. together. That's what I'm get talking about. Okay, we'll yeah. check you tomorrow. Ben right, Davis fellas. joining us from the ballpark. Ricky Batalico of Nick Castellanos and company. Listen to this. A leadoff batter tonight. Reese Hoskins. This is from Carl Graber, our impeccable statistician. Uh, Reese Hoskins, three for his last 16, three strikeouts. Alec Bohm, one for his last 14, six strikeouts. Nick Castellanos, 0 oh for his last 11, five for his last 38. Schwarber is clean up tonight. Four for 22. He had a couple of hits tonight. I got it. Nine strikeouts. You had a statistic while we were watching about Schwarber. I believe he had 100, 123 or 124 at bats and 50 strikeouts. Yeah, more than a third of his at bats that's are strikeouts start. that's a lot and, of and when you look at this real muto one for 11 two for his last 24 I, you know i don't know whether it's it's uh, kevin long the hitting instructor whether it's joe girardi who we're going to hear from him in a moment but how do you get these guys turned around because it's not happening the, the, the problem is when you look at jt jt was one of the only guys that was swinging the bats early on in the season he was swinging the bat well and all of a sudden you look down he's batting 231 231. What the heck happened to on base percentage? Can some, if anybody has that answer, go ahead and tweet me because I'm fed up with this. Please. Wasn't it two years? No, two years ago, what were we told? Everything is about on base percentage, right? Take a look at some of the on base percentages on this team. Batting average means nothing anymore, which I think is pathetic because I think that tells you what what type of hitter you actually are. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't necessarily tell you what type of home run hitter you are, but definitely tells you what type of hitter you are. Uh, they're, they're, the quality of at bats have gone way downhill. Look at Johan Camargo there. He had two hits tonight. The first one was, was a, a bunt. bunt. Okay, you ever hear a hit him where they ain't? That's what he did. Why don't they do that every time? His second hit amounted to a swinging bunt. I know he, he swung at it and went down to third base. He got a single in the late going because of it. Why can't they do it? I don't care They're not if you're Bryce Harper, you're Ryan Howard, what? what kind of power you have. If there's no one over there, get the ball there and get that, on that's, base. That's fine and dandy. That, that does you know what that doesn't upset me at all if you're going to lay down a bunt where nobody's playing that's fine as long as you get it down as long as you make it to first base I'm fine with that because that's passing the baton right isn't that what you're yeah. supposed to do as a hitter you're and supposed it's to pass it to baseball. the next guy but what's 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 frustrating to me is you have put together a bunch of guys that are just trying to launch just trying to hit the ball as hard as they can up in the air I mean, home runs, I've said this a million times. Great home run hitters hit a home run, what, once every 10 to 13 at-bats? Those are the greatest of all time. So if you're an average home, hit, home run hitter, you're talking once every 18 to 20 at-bats. So you are giving away generally 19 at-bats every 20 at-bats. Roman Quinn, two Makes for his no last sense. 22, six strikeouts. Odubel Herrera, two for his last 20, six strikeouts. You're going to keep Up going, and down you? the lineup. I would if there were more players. I don't know. Maybe someone would get on base. I'm unsure. And the whole OBP number one, number one, notion I'm, is I'm, not I'm, happening either. I'm starting to believe that this team cannot function without Bryce Harper, which is sad. Which is sad. It's scary. To it is scary. It's sad. When Bryce comes back, hopefully tomorrow, maybe he gives this team a spark because they need something right now. I know you went out to LA. I know you went out to Seattle, but this is a completely different week, and you're playing the same team, and it didn't look it. No. That, that's what I can't say. It did not look. 
And you know what really gets my goat is that the energy, the energy level of this ball club. It's Everything nowhere. is everything's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's great. Everything's fine. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. The heck with that. Let's see some anger. Let's see some emotion. Let's see some fired up. Let's see some adrenaline rushes. You don't see that. Last time we saw that, Schwarber was mad at the, the balls and strikes, but he was arguing for both teams. Last time they saw that, it's the post-game show. That's when they saw the energy and the passion. <sighs> I'm sorry. Um, how about this from yeah. another esteemed colleague, Dan Roach, one of our producers, Bryce Harper. You mentioned him. His last three games, three home runs, seven total extra base hits. You ready for this? All the Phillies, all of them, five games since Harper's last game, one home run, six extra base hits. So Harper topped the whole team. Okay, Joe Girardi on what his team did or did not do tonight. What do you think the difference was uh, tonight? Well, he didn't make mistakes up in the zone like he did last week. Um, and really, that's probably about the only game he had done it all year long. And um, I thought he used all his pitches effectively. He elevated when he needed to, and um, we weren't able to do much off him. The ability to get multiple hits in one inning until the ninth, uh, it seems like that's happened several times this week. I mean, do you think guys are kind of suppressing right now? I, I don't know. I don't know what pressing is, right? Every at bat when you're in the big leagues, a big at bat, right? I mean, that's the bottom line. This is a, it's a game based on production, right? So everything you do, day one, day 10, day 150, there, there's pressure on players. That's the bottom line. So I don't, I don't necessarily think so. Schwarber and JT coming through in the ninth inning after rough weeks offensively. I mean, did you... It's good to see. I mean, maybe it gets them going. You know, you look at the first double. Schwab's had center field. You look at the next one, left center field. Um, really good at bats. JT gets down to two strikes, you know, a double. So maybe that's what gets them both going. JT, he kind of got rid of the, the leg, uh, the lift, <coughs> hot race, with, you know, like a foot tap. And yeah. He brought it back to, he got rid of it today and went back to the old way. I mean, is he kind of just searching right now? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what happens to hitters in this game, right? Um, when you're struggling, sometimes you start searching, and sometimes that can be dangerous instead of just staying with the plan. You threw a lot of pitches in the first three innings there. What did you just see from him? Just not throwing strikes, right? And they, they waited him out. Um, they did a good job of getting him in long counts right from the beginning. Mookie Betts did it right from the beginning. And uh, he just didn't throw enough strikes. How do you think Harper's absence affects the way that opponents attack your lineup? Well, I think opponents attack an individual the way they're going to attack the individual. They have a scouting port the way they're going to attack the individual. <clears throat> but there are times where there might be a situation, you know, second and third, you know, Harper's on deck, you know, you can't afford to walk a guy. So then it, then it can become a little bit different in a sense, but they have a game plan and they're going to go after hitters the way the game plan presents itself. We'll see about tomorrow. You guys have been walking a lot. Do you think that that could be that impacts you know what we're seeing offensively? Oh, definitely. I mean, the free passes are important, and we have not been walking a lot lately, and it's probably hurt us.